It's Pat Heyman. In this short little video, I'm going to show you how to use Minergate in order to get started with uh, some Bitcoin or mining really easily and quickly. So I'll have a blog post on my website that has all the links. You can go to Minergate directly, or if you like, you can use my affiliate uh, link, which is patheyman.com slash Minergate, and that will give me a small commission at no cost to you. So if you want to thank me for this video, that'd be a nice way to do it. So we're going to go to patheyman.com slash Minergate, and that's going to take you to Minergate.com. And now you can actually start download and mining immediately, but you want to sign up first. So sign up, and then once you've got your login, do the next step, which is download the miner and start mining. Logged in, you can go ahead and click on downloads. And then most of the time, you're probably going to start out with the GUI miner, which is the graphical user interface miner. And it will try and detect what you have and tell you what to download. So you'll see here, we've detected a suitable miner for you. You can use either Windows 64-bit or 32-bit. If you've got a fairly new machine within the last, say, four or five years, it's definitely 64-bit. So go ahead and download that. And it's only about 10 megabytes, so it's done. So now we're going to run it, and it will install. At this point, you're going to have to enter in your email address that you use to sign up for your Minergate account. And this is how you will get paid out in Bitcoin or whatever, um, whatever you're actually doing. And then just click Start Mining. Now, by default, it's going to try and do what it thinks is the most profitable. Now, if you're using a laptop like I am, you're probably not going to have GPU mining available unless you have a gaming laptop. So we're going to ignore that for the purposes of this video because we are specifically talking about laptops. So uh, by default, it's mining XMR, which is Monero. And Monero is a very good currency to mine with a laptop because it is CPU intensive, but not GPU in intensive. So it uses your processing unit, not your graphics card. Um, you'll see a number of things here. Um, and over this side, you see that there's this merged mining. Um, by default, it will be mining both um, whatever your main coin is, and then it will also try and mine this over here, which is can mine two different coins at the same time. Um, if you want to click over to the mining tab, you can actually see over here a little bit more about what you've got running. So you can you can actually mine multiple coins at the same time, and you can change how many cores are available. So next to this, we see a hash rate. Oh, sorry. So we see two hash rates. So the top hash rate. The top hash rate is the hash rate for Bitcoin, or sorry, for Monero in this case. And then the bottom hash rate is the hash rate for the FCN, which you can see over here. Um, you can change the number of cores you have dedicated to mining. So you probably don't want to run on all of your cores because you're just going to be running your, your, um, your machine at full capacity and it's going to generate some heat and it could potentially decrease the life of your machine and it may slow down your machine while you're working on it. So if you've got it just idle sitting around in a cold environment, yeah, go ahead and bump it up to four all the time or whatever many cores you have. However, if you're actively using that and you'll notice right there that it just bumped up a little bit, it's a little bit faster now. If on the other hand, you're using your laptop actively and you're doing something with it, say surfing the web, maybe you want to leave it on three or even two cores. And if you're doing something like Photoshop or video editing, in that case, you probably want even fewer cores being used at that time. That is pretty much it. Uh, I just want to show you your um, the, the dashboard for a moment so you can see what that looks like. So if you go back to the website and then go to your dashboard, this will show you, right now I'm mining actually three currencies because I'm using some other, some other, um, oh, what do you call it, some other uh, computers to mine. And you can see how much total you've mined at the moment. 
and then if you scroll down, you'll see what you're actually currently mining. So at the moment, I'm mining Monero, and you can see how many transactions there are. Sometimes the number of active workers doesn't quite work right. And then you can see that I'm also mining Phantom Coin and Dash Coin at the same time. And you can see how many unconfirmed in total mind you have. Um, it takes a couple days for the unconfirmed to become confirmed. Sorry, it can take up to a couple days for the unconfirmed to become confirmed and then deposited to your account. The last question, of course, is what should you be mining? Now, when you first started up, you saw that it automatically started mining what it thinks is the most profitable for you. Um, that may or may not be the actual case um, based on the difficulty of mining. So another good option besides Monero for a laptop is Eon. Um, Eon is a fork of Monero, and it's designed for mobile devices, and you can actually run it on your phone if you download the, the MinerGate app on your phone. Um, the nice thing about Eon is that there's not as many people mining it, so it's actually easier to mine than it is to mine Monero. So if you mine Eon, you might want to exchange it for Bitcoin or some other coin of your choice rather than leaving it in Eon because Eon just isn't a very highly traded um, coin and there's no multi-wallets that actually support it. So if you're using something like Jack's Wallet or, or Exodus, you know, none of those will support Eon. You've got to use a separate wallet for that. So generally speaking, exchange it for another coin that's more easily traded and then you know, use Eon just for mining. And finally, if you found this video helpful, do me a favor and use my affiliate link to sign up for your MinerGate account. You can click on the link in the video description or just type it in. One last thing I want to leave you with before we go is that I have heard from some people that the GUI miner does not, is not quite as efficient. You don't get as high a hash rate or um, completion rate as you do with the console miner, but the console miner is a little bit more difficult to configure because it's not a nice graphical interface, it's a command line interface. So I'll do another video on using console miners, but in the meantime, at least you've got something going.